He's getting older. Pour some sugar on me! Oh, hit the full button! But not wiser. Bonarama! This is the Lefty Show. Welcome, everybody, to the Lefty Show. I am your host, Lefty. Glad to be here with all of you today, Tuesday, the 23rd of September in the year of our Spaghetti Monster 2014. Welcome one, welcome all to the Lefty Show. Hope to put on a good show for you today. Thank you to everybody that's been uh, watching, liking, 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 favoriting, subscribing on YouTube. YouTube.com slash LeftyOX is where you can find the show in its YouTube formation. Thank you to everybody that's been sharing the show. Friends, family, and co-workers, it helps the show grow. You can find the show wherever you get your podcasts for uh, your PC, tablet, or mobile device, iOS, or Android, Windows. It does not matter. Wherever you get your podcasts, search The Lefty Show, and you will find us. Be sure to subscribe and download all the episodes at your leisure. And, of course, thank you to everybody that has donated. I'm raising.com forward slash 643 Productions is the link. I believe you can find it find it in the description. It's I'm raising.com forward slash six four three productions. Um I want to talk about we've started or we I say we. Well actually we you know we are being represented here. Uh the United States has begun bombing uh the news broke last night while I was watching uh, while I was watching the Bears game, of all things, the news broke and um, the U.S. has begun bombing ISIS or ISIL or IS. They need a brand relaunch. ISIS targets in Syria. And I know you're thinking, Syria? Wait a minute. Wasn't the U.S. just a couple, just like last year? Weren't they like really mad at Syria? And Al-Assad, I believe it's Al-Assad, the leader of that country for supposedly using chemical weapons to quell protesters in his country? Were we, was, did we, you know, a couple, couple months ago, not that long ago, say, hey, Syria, and your leader Al-Assad, don't do this. We don't like you. Now we're working with Syrian leaders to attack ISIS targets. Funny how allegiances in the political, geopolitical stage can change just that quickly. But, uh, you know, it's it, it started with ISIS doing all this, ISIS in Iraq, ISIS beginning to, trying to take back Iraq, trying to create an Islamic state, as is their name namesake. And... It started originally, the, the United States and, uh, and other Western powers are going to give political, it was just, just going to be military advisors, that's it. No boots on the ground, no airstrikes, no overt military aid, just military advisors. So we were told. That was the story. Saying, we're going to give you military advisors, that's it. We're done with Iraq. We're done fighting. We're not, that's it. We're out of here. Then it became more. Then it was, okay, well, now we're going to aid people in the fight against ISIS. And now, again, it broke last night, we're bombing the United States, bombing ISIS targets in Syria. And keep in mind, everybody, everybody now thinking, oh, we're bombing, oh, regardless of whether you think it's good or bad. We'll get to that in a bit. Regardless of whether you think bombing ISIS targets in whatever country is good or bad, remember this. There's still ISIS running rampant in Iraq. Taking down Iraq, you know, uh, absolutely decimating sites in Iraq, sacred sites and, and all these things. Apparently beheading Christians and, and all this stuff. There's still those guys. Those guys are still around. That means, that tells me, and it's, it's going to be, it's going to start with airstrikes. And then drone, drone strikes. And then there's going to be troops on the ground. You mark my words right now. Probably by Christmas, 
There are going to be troops deployed, perhaps limited deployments, but there are going to be troops, boots on the physical ground in the Mideast again, fighting ISIS, ISIL, IS, whatever. And more people will die, more innocent civilians, more American troops who just want to stay home, do their duty, serve their country, and go home. More people will die on both sides. And the disenfranchised Islamic group, these disenfranchised Islamic people who form the basis for ISIS because they have, they have, they're human too. I know it's easy to demonize ISIS and to think of them as just this, this faceless evil corporation like Spectre from James Bond movies or the village, or the, not the, or the village people. You can hate them too. Ah, oh, there's like the village people. Oh, Jesus. Oh, we got to get them. Take them down now. It may be easy to do that, but they have things that they want. They say, hey, this get this out of our culture. Get you, get American, there's all these Americanisms, all these Westernisms, all these things that have, that have invaded our culture. We don't like it. We are Islamic Puritans, radical Islamic Puritans. That's what we want. And that's a, isolated in a vacuum. That's okay. All right, go ahead and be your crazy, radical, pure, puritanical Islam followers. Go ahead. You go do it over there. More people will die. More people will go to join the fight. There will now be questions about more and more people, more and more apparently social media is being used to recruit ISIS members, recruit people to ISIS, including some impressionable uh, adolescents. And many people have been apparently arrested en route to ISIS recruiters in Syria and other places abroad for attempting to fight, to, for attempting to join ISIS. And I, and I look at that, and I, I want to ask, maybe there's something, but I want to know, what am I being arrested for? Well, you want to go join ISIS. Yeah, I'm a CPA. I think, they need, I, I think they need help with their books. They're taking in money from various fundraising efforts, rich Qataris, and then their various illegal enterprises. They do, they're taking in money and they need books balance. They need somebody in logistics. I'm not picking up a gun. I just want to go do, I just want to go shuffle papers around for them because they need somebody to do that. They're off fighting in Iraq. They need somebody back home at the homestead keeping their books. I'm a bookkeeper. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go over there and, uh, and it's going to be more and more, hey, what are you doing? Where are you going? Well, I'm going to Syria. What are you going to do there? Well, piss off, man. I'm going to do whatever I want. There's going to be more invasions into individual liberty, liberties from people of, of, of westernized, supposed civilized, supposed advanced cultures. I'm now going to have to be wary about what the government thinks of my trip to Syria. I'm not going to Syria, but you're gonna, if you're going to Syria or you're going to anywhere where ISIS is, you're now on a, you're, you're on a list. You're going to be on a list. Somebody, who, what are you doing? You'll be looking at your itinerary, doing all kinds of checks and stuff. And that's what's going to happen. That is the progression. And I guarantee you, I'm calling it right now by Christmas time, there are going to be boots on the ground. Not well healed, not the well healed military advisors. I'm talking boots, troops, APCs, Abrams tanks on the ground. Getting ready to go. Apache helicopters, all that stuff. They're going to go. And try to, bleh, we got to quell ISIS. And here's my point about all that. Here's my problem. Just like the problem I had with 9-11 and all the things that happened after that. Just like the problem I have, you know, I wasn't alive, with Kore- the Korean War, the Vietnam War, Desert Storm, and Desert Storm 2, Part D, Electric Boogaloo, and now these airstrikes in Syria against supposed ISIS targets. Because you, they say ISIS targets. What does that mean? I, what does it mean? Does anybody ask? If, you, if you're in favor, oh, yeah, we're going to go get them because they beheaded a couple of people. Arr, we got to go get them. 
And they say, well, they're attacking ISIS targets. The, U- the U.S. government says, we are attacking ISIS targets. Do you just take that at face value, or do you wonder, hey, <laughs> hey there, um, excuse me, excuse me, hey, you say ISIS targets, what does that mean? Well, this is, this is guy in his house, he's a recruiter. Uh, are you sure about that? Yeah, we're pretty sure. All right. Um, does he have a family? Yeah, he's got a family. Okay. So are you just killing the guy? Well, hopefully. Wait, wh- huh? Hopefully? What What do you mean? Well, you know, it's a bomb. They're, they're, they're smart, but they're not that smart. It's actually the guidance package that's smart, but, it, you know, it, it's a bomb. It's not a, it's not a, at a certain level, it's not a surgical instrument any instrument anymore it's just a device that deals massive amount of death and it's 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 an aoe it's got an aoe and we can't we can't we can't make it any smaller we can't make the aoe any smaller area of effect it's good uh mmo reference for you uh nerds out there so there's does anybody okay how many innocent civilians have already been killed probably a couple probably a couple there's no doubt in my you don't go bombing tar- isis targets Without killing innocent people. Don't do it. Don't try to tell me that it has happened. There are, there are a couple of dead innocent civilians as a result of the bombing that has already transpired in, in Syria. And here's my problem. All without a formal declaration of war by Congress. In the United States of America, in our founding document, the, the, one of the fundamental principles is separation of powers and checks and balances. We have the judicial branch, the executive branch, and the legislative branch. Each has a, has a, has a set out couple rules for them. Here's what you do. Here's what you have the power to do. And the, the judicial branch gets kind of weird, especially at the federal level, because they have the power to theoretically give themselves more power or give people power. Give other branches power. They can just decide, well, uh, this. Marbury, uh, Marbury versus Madison is still, by, me- by some legal scholars, a questionable decision. Bringing the idea of judicial review, because ju- du- as, I, as I read the Constitution, judicial review is not part of the Supreme Court's mandate, the head of the judicial branch. Not part of their mandate, judicial review. They gave themselves that power in Marbury versus Madison. So even the power of the judicial branch, as it stands today, is possibly unconstitutional. But I digress. Separation of powers, checks and balances. In our founding document, the Constitution of the United States of America, Congress is giving the power, given the power, to declare war, which is objectively different than the power to make war. And there's a key distinction. Congress has the power to declare war, and the President of the United States is made the Commander-in-Chief. Some people use this as to say, well, you see, the Congress can declare war to make it official, but the, the president, as commander-in-chief, has plenipotentiary authority to do whatever he wants with the military because he's the commander-in-chief. And I say, no. No, 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 no. Congress, the, the power to declare war, was given to Congress to make offensive, offensive military acts legal. Squeaky clean. Here you go. You, you, the president, the commander-in-chief, can only engage offensively in war unless we declare war. You can only, we, we, you can only, and once we do, and once we do, you as the commander-in-chief have the authority to make war on these people and do it however you want, as commander-in-chief, as supreme allied command. That's what you can do. It's not, it's not, well, there's war, and then there's whatever the president wants. No, 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 no. And also, the president is, is labeled commander-in-chief not as a military, not, in a, in, in, not to further the military. It's not a military distinction. It's not to say, well, here you go, now, now you can do what you want. It's so that the president, a civilian, has oversight of the military. You have the elected officials who can declare war, who can make it possible to send the military places, and then you have the president, a civilian, overseeing them. In offensive military operations, as the document is written, Congress defines war 
Congress gives the power to war. They define war. The objective, let's say, declaring war on Germany. We declare war on Nazi Germany and Italy and Japan. We declare war on you. Now you, the president, you go and do that. You, the president, make war. Congress declares war. The president makes war. Nowhere, nowhere, nowhere does it say that it's legal for the president to just go around bombing people. Hey, here you go. Go. Here, here's some bombs for you. We got to get you. And I, 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 I say that the, the, uh, the War Powers Resolution is unconstitutional, and it is, even though, even though it's meant to introduce congressional oversight to military acts by the president. It's meant to say Congress is trying to get their foot in the door, and it's unconstitutional for what, some kind of narrow technical reason. But it's also unconstitutional because Congress should stop the president. There's, there's no congressional oversight into the president's authority to, to engage in offensive military operations. There's no authority there. It's not in the document. You, don't, you are lending credence. The, the War Powers Resolution is unconstitutional in my mind because it lends credence to an even more unconstitutional act. No. The president does not have the power to make war, make offensive war at his discretion unless Congress has declared war. Has Congress declared war against ISIS or ISIL or Syria or Iraq or Afghanistan or anywhere else? We haven't declared war in 70 years. And yes, and yes, and yes, that makes Korea, Vietnam, Desert Storm, Desert Storm Part 2, the Chechen rebels crap that Clinton got got the U.S. into, Afghanistan, and now this. It makes them all illegal. Think about that. The president, the president somehow believes, and people are okay with it, the president, ah, the president has the authority to make war as the commander in chief. And yeah, that means he can just go around and bomb people. And just bomb them. And that's okay. And you think that and people honestly think that's okay. Like, yeah, go get them. Without a formal declaration of war from Congress, which is which in part necessitates some kind of review. Huh, do we really want to go to war with these people? Do we really want to do it? Uh, yeah, okay, bam, bam, bam. Thank you, man. Here you go. Do we really want to go to war with ISIS? I mean, because we'd have to go to war with whoever's harboring them or whomever's harboring them or wherever they are. Do we, re- do we really want to do that? Well, they beheaded a couple guys. Yeah, it's two people. All right. No, we got more. We got other crap to worry about. The War Powers Resolution is unconstitutional because it furthers and lends credence, legitimacy to other unconstitutional acts. The president has no plenipotentiary authority to wage offensive war without an overt declaration from Congress. And yes, that means Congress should take time to decide whether to declare war. Purely def- Now, defensive war... Making defensive war in our own shores, well, that's easy. Duh. But it, talking about bombing somebody on the other side of the world, literally the other side of the world, that's a bit different. And that me and and yes, I'm well aware that waiting more, convening Congress, having sessions, hearings, and then Congress voting to declare war will take time. Yes, it will. Not that long as it used to, because we, we in the age of jet travel and computers and the internet, you can wherever the from the far reaches of the United States of the of the fifty, the fifty we got. Every representative can be brought back to brought brought back to sit in a hearing and and vote on vote to declare war within what six hours, seven maybe. I don't know how long a flight from Alaska to. Ugh. 
Alaska to D.C. It's probably a long-ass flight. Ooh, Hawaii. Gah. Ugh. All right, so eight hours. Certainly within 12. Everybody's there. Everyone, everyone. So you got from the word go, hey, I want to declare war on these people. You got at, at most 12 hours. So don't. I don't want to hear about, oh, it takes so long. No, you got, you have what, 12 hours if they're not there? And if it's a big enough deal, we have a process. Use the process. There need not be any special circumventing of the process, because to wait, especially to wage offensive war, to kill people, to commit troops and spend money. That's a big deal. And the logic is flawed, usually. People's logic is flawed about this because they say, they say, well, things are happening so fast now. The, the president needs to decide quickly. He needs to be able to decide quickly when to commit troops. He needs, as soon as he hears about something, he, 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 in the global stage, he has to be able to, to decide and commit assets as soon as he takes in information in real time. He needs to be able to do that. And I say false. That's not true. It's not true. If anything, the ability to, with modern technology, jet travel, the internet, data transfer, and modern military transport, the, the, the ability to project power means, gives the president, gives the governing body more time to be circumspect about what they're going to do. More time, not less. It gives them more time. Now, back in the day, back in the day when it took three months to travel to any other place of consequence, talking 200 years ago, when it took three months, and in the days where you had to be really, really, really careful about picking ambassadors because they were you, and they had to be able to speak for you, and they wielded your authority, and being an ambassador was a huge deal. Now you call somebody, hey, how you doing? Ah, yeah, screw you. No, screw you more. Ah, click, damn it. I hate that guy. North Korea, damn it. Another crank call. Send Rodman over there. Where's Dennis? Dennis, come here. We got a, we got a job for you. Go talk to Kim Jong-un. He's good. Back in the day, being an ambassador, you, there was no, you had to wait three months, six months, round trip for a response. The, if anything, the only time the president had to decide, like, oh, I just heard about this. I got to make a decision right now, was when it would take three months to mobilize troops and get them to anywhere they needed to go. Like, hey, France is being, imagine World War II took place in the 1700s as opposed to the 1900s. Imagine it took place in the, what would that be, the 18th century as opposed to the 20th century. I think that's right, right? Right, because the century number is always one more than the than the first two digits. Because nineteen, the nineteenth century is actually um, eighteen hundred to nineteen hundred, or no, eighteen hundred to eighteen ninety nine. Okay, all right, I got it. Yeah, yeah. Imagine it happened then. You would need to decide. Hey, oh my God! Wait, first of all. You, it would take three months to get the word from Hawaii. Like, oh, my God. First of all, what? There's something out there, but oh, my God. We need to decide right now because it's going to take three months for us to get there, and we have to, we have to decide right now. Now you hear something. What's, a, what's the operating radius of a, of a modern aircraft carrier, especially with tankers? What is it? Thousand, it's measured in thousands of miles, isn't it? Thousands of miles is your effective operating radius of a single aircraft carrier. Not to mention jet travel and you know going over the northern North Pole to get to this place, and you've got C five galaxies and all this crap. Just one aircraft carrier. You get measured in thousands of miles, and it would what it would take a couple hours. So you hear, oh man, you got Mr. President. Here's what's going on. Okay. Well, you got to decide right now. Well, if I pick up this phone, I can right now, pretty much at the speed of light, communicate my intent, my order to that commander and say, all right, go bomb these guys. 
So that could happen. That takes, what, 30 seconds to pick up the phone? Give me this guy. And he picks it up. And I say, bomb these guys. And he says, okay, click. It takes 10 seconds, really. So, and then you got to fuel up the jets and get them up there. But it takes hours, not days, not weeks, not months. It takes hours. All right. Well, I can afford to spend a little bit of time thinking about this. And if it's a big enough deal, if it's a big enough deal, like, say, 9-11, like, we got to go get them. If it's a big enough deal, don't you? Let's, huh, all right, hold on, hold on, hold on. This was a bad, this was really, really bad. Let's convene Congress and let's declare war on some MMFers. Let's go get them. Go get them. It's unconstitutional to just give the press, oh, yeah, go get it. No, 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 no. You're misreading it and your logic is flawed. Congress declares war. The president makes war as defined by Congress. Checks and balances, separation of powers. It's that simple. We have a process. We have a process. Use it. Let it play out. Because if you start saying, well, we have this process, but, 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 we need to be able to do this special thing when this special thing happens, then there's no point in having the process at all. It's like the people that, pick it, Trayvon Martin, Mike Brown, Michael Brown case, Ferguson, Missouri. A grand jury is convened, and it's possible, it's possible that the grand jury will return without an indictment. They will choose not to charge Officer uh, Darren Wilson. It's possible. And they are hearing evidence right now. That's the process that we have, the legal process. You and, and people are trying to circumvent it. They say, just charge Wilson with anything. Oh, my God, give us a trial. No. You have to let the process play out. We have these systems. Because otherwise, otherwise, what the, then who cares? Then why even have a judicial system? If you're just going to say, oh, this guy did something that we don't like, he may have done something really bad, just charge him with something and put him on trial, why even have a judicial system? If you're not going to, and if you're not going to accept anything other than a conviction on serious charges for Officer Wilson, just like people that were not able, were not even cognizant of the possibility that George Zimmerman could be exonerated by his jury, by a jury of his peers, be acquitted of the charge, of murdering Trayvon Martin. If you're if you're not going to accept that, then why even have a judicial system? Let's just put it on Twitter then. Screw it all. You know, you got a you got a traffic ticket? I think this is crap. What does Twitter say? Arr, what does Reddit say about oh the outrage machine? Let's just plug this situation into the outrage machine. Screw the judicial process. You have to be you have to accept that we have a process. The process needs to apply everywhere or it shouldn't apply anywhere. That's the point. And the machinations to declare war and to make offensive war are clear and defined and set in the Constitution of the United States of America. And if it doesn't apply to ISIS or Iraq or Vietnam or Korea, then it shouldn't apply anywhere. Then just rip up the Constitution and let's start all over. But there's other things. You look at the Constitution, you go, oh, there's some, there's some things in there that I like. I like that. I like doing, uh, I like doing this. I like this, the, the Bill of Rights thing. That's pretty good. It's good. You know, the amendment process and, uh, and the checks and balances and the, and the two houses of Congress and, and the differing terms. That's, that's really cool stuff. I like that. I like this setup. But if you're going to accept that, then you're also going to have to accept the separation of military power and how to wage offensive war, how to make offensive war. You have to respect and go through the process. And to circumvent and just say, oh, yeah, I feel like bombing Syria now. Yeah, because there's ISIS guys in there, we think. Yeah, they're, they're pretty bad, pretty bad dudes. We're just going to go bomb them. Think about that. Think about what it does. And somebody honestly said to me yesterday, somebody honestly said to me on Twitter when I – when I officially, where when I first started talking about this, officially, yes, I officially, we're going to start talking about Syria. When I first said, uh, no, 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 waging, making offensive war is unconstitutional. It's an illegal war, illegal combat operations. 
Somebody said, well, Korea, there will probably be people in the comments. Korea, Vietnam, and all these things, they were all undeclared wars. We didn't declare war. So why st- somebody honestly said, why start obeying the Constitution now? And I said, think about, think about what you just said. Well, you know, we don't obey the Constitution. Why start now? Why do- <laughs> uh, uh, stupid. Yes, ISIS is bad, and they may do bad things. They may even do bad things to somebody you are even tangentially fond of. Or in some way, no. Some way related to. They may do it, yeah. This process that, that we have, the, the judicial system for Trayvon Martin and for Mike Brown and for George Zimmerman and Darren Wilson, the judicial process is more important than all of them. And the ability... And the machination to wage war is also, is also bigger than ISIS, than any of the reporters beheaded, any of the people killed, any of the people doing the bombing, or anything else. It's bigger than all of them. And you need to respect the process by which it's all done. Otherwise, the entire thing is folly. The entire thing is farcical. Now, okay, maybe they'll go get them. I don't care. Heeding to the process, sticking to the founding document, to the way those things are done is way more important than stopping those people. Way more important. You want to declare a war? Declare a war. And the best part, the best part, oh, oh, the best part. It shouldn't be the War Powers Resolution. It should be the War Powers Act. The founding document of the United States has a built-in mechanism to say, hey, if I become outdated for whatever reason, here's how you change me. And here's an official way to make it the highest, the highest, the most ironclad thing we can, an amendment to the Constitution. Here's how you create another amendment to the Constitution. Here's how you do it. So if we really need, if we really need to do all this, if we really need to circumvent the first couple articles of the Constitution because, you know, military-industrial complex and all that, all right, then draft and pass an amendment. Not a law, not a resolution, not a finding, not an executive order. Amend the Constitution. Then it becomes, there you go. And the only, the only thing you got then is, a, is another amendment or judicial review. That's it. Then okay, then I got nothing to say. But until you do that, until you actually amend the Constitution, officially amend the Constitution, these are illegal military operations being waged unconstitutionally. What would some people call that? An illegal war waged without an official declaration of the sovereign in which innocent civilians are killed. Some people might call that a... What's the phrase? What is that? That's a war crime, isn't it? If you don't have to... If if, if a military commander is not ordered or does not not have proper legal standing to wage war on people, say he doesn't like burglars, and he starts waging war on them, and he starts bombing where he thinks burglary suspects are, and he, he, get, he gets them, and they're bad dudes. They're bad dudes. He gets them. Yeah, but a few more innocent people are killed. Eh, yeah, well, but we got the bad guys. That's a, that's a war crime, isn't it? Isn't it? Doesn't we? Isn't that, like, really extra special bad? Like, you went around killing people without, without even the legal standing to do so? You're just, good. You're just like, I'm the president, I'm just going to start bombing people. Here we go. I signed my name. It's all illegal. Yeah, that's a, ugh, ugh. More people are going to die. Yes. I would rather have them die because we were adhering to the rules that we set for ourselves and not being overcome by sensationalism, not being overcome by emotion. Because once you start doing that, once you start circumventing, short-circuiting the process, ah, screw it, I gotta go through this resistor and transformer and the four-way diodes, ah, screw it, short-circuit it, we need this current now, damn it! For God's sake, Jim, I'm a doctor! Now we gotta short-circuit it, here we go. 
When you start doing that, then the whole system means absolutely nothing. It means absolutely nothing. Declare war on ISIS. And declare war subsequently on anybody who harbors ISIS. Declare war on Qatar. And if you need to, declare war on Saudi Arabia. Declare war on anybody who harbors rich Arabs funding ISIS. That's how you do it. Declare war. No Rangers, no Delta Force, no special operations. Uh uh-uh. uh. No, 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 no. Declare war. And if it's not, and if you can't, and if your argument is, well, I can't, I can't, I can't, Congress won't allow it, Congress won't allow it, then you should not be doing it, probably. And if you really, really, really need this power now, amend the Constitution, and then I got nothing to say until judicial review overturns it. All right. In, um, I talked about this on Twitter over the weekend, and apparently there's been some updates in uh, the uh, Sam Pepper is apparently a, a large prank YouTuber, 2.4 million subscribers, which is good. pretty good. You know, that's, that's up there. That's, uh, that's up there in subscriber count. Released a video uh, last week, I believe it was last week, showing him a prank video, allegedly or apparently showing him, purporting to show him going around grabbing random girls' butt cheeks and as some kind of prank, as some kind of like, ha, ha, ha. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't understand it. And you see, that's the problem. Now, I said on Twitter, one, I really hope this guy wouldn't be that stupid because let me tell you, this guy makes a lot of money, a lot of money. And now, I'm not, I don't mean to get in the habit of counting other people's money for them, and I'm not going to try. A lot of people do that, like, oh, this guy makes that much. No, you don't know. You, you don't know. Just you, be quiet and go sit over there. I'm not going to count this guy's money for him, but I can tell you, he's good. He's good. The, the, these chains he's wearing in his mea culpa videos, those chains, probably real gold. Not, 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 not that fake crap. Probably real good stuff. Real good. Those tattoos that he sports, not cheap. Not cheap. So anyway, I, I lamented on Twitter, like, I really hope this guy isn't that stupid. And then I realized, you know, guy's got 2.4 million subscribers. He probably gets... In the, in the high fives, maybe possibly even tens of millions of views a video with his prank stuff. A lot of people like prank videos. That's the new craze. The new craze on YouTube. And a lot of people do it really well. A lot of people do some really funny stuff. So, you know, you got a guy with 2.4 million subscribers. There's probably, you put out a casting call to any acting troupe, any, any improv troupe that wants, to, that wants to put some things in their reel. In their demo reel, watch me acting, watch me doing this in a comedy setting. You put on a casting call to all of them, there you go. You you can cast anything. You could probably fill a gigantic stadium with all the people, all the actors and improvers who would be really, really happy to be in a Sam Pepper video, to really act and and put on a show and ha ha, look at all, all these pranks. And it turned out that this video showcasing what would otherwise be sexual assault, where you run around grabbing girls' asses, which is sexual assault ass bags, don't do it. They were actors, he says. They were actors. They were. He wasn't actually going around grabbing unaware butts. Just, ah, hey. Here you go. Hey, big stroker. Touch her. <laughs> which, okay, all right. He had to admit, he had to admit that his videos that that this video at least was staged and okay and and now people are going to have to kind of have that well wait a minute it's if it's not real then uh, you know what am I what do I really enjoy uh, do I enjoy the ride or or is it the production uh, does the production ruin it and I just ask what shows do you watch that are actually real you know what's real people itching their crotch. You don't see that a lot on TV, do you? A guy itching his crotch? Girl, oh man, underwear's getting all up in there. Ugh, ugh. That's real life. Do you see that on any show? Your show is produced. You like the production. You, you like the show to be produced and edited and whittled down to all the good bits for you so that you can consume them. You like that. Now, if you like crotch itching, if you can sit and watch a guy itch his balls for about an hour... All right, well, then you, that's what you like. But I, I bet there's probably not many people that are like, oh, yeah, this is real. This is real life, my friend. That's what this is. So a lot of people are going to have to have that discussion. They're probably upset. Like, oh, my God, you fake your videos? Well, duh. 
you inherit you had to know that I wouldn't be dumb enough to run around grabbing butts. And that brings me to my to my other point. And again, like I said, this is not like, oh, screw everybody that's way more successful than I will ever be on YouTube or crap in any venture. Ah, oh, screw them. I'm so angry. It's just I have some consternation regarding why everybody is so like enthralled by people being just ass bags to one another. Just just the worst kind of cretinous. I mean, that's because if you watch prank videos, there's there's good stuff. Like the guy that pretends that he's not driving, that there's no driver or something like that. Like, ha ha, I got you. Yeah. But there are a lot of people that watch this video originally who were like, ha ha ha, look at him going around grabbing those unsuspecting people's asses. Ha 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 ha. It's so funny. Where people just go into chat roulette and start swearing at people. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Yeah, he swore at that guy. It was so funny. Why is why does it appear to, that so much of comedy now is just people being asses to one another? Just watch this guy be an ass to people. Subscribe, like, favorite, drive click through stuff. There you go. Why is that? Why is there a market for that at all? I want to watch this guy be an ass to people. Just go out and, hey, hey, bitch, you're ugly. Ha, 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 prank video. Like and favorite. Uh, I, come on. Now, there, again, there's no doubt in my mind that many of the people that do these comedy stuff, these comedy videos, could probably write all kinds of comedy. This is, they just, ha, they just, people want low brow. People want, because I regard that kind of comedy as low brow. People want it and they're going to do it. Sam Pepper and all these kinds of prank guys, Mr. Technical Difficult, uh, Herder of Buffalo, who I knew when he was, I was on a podcast with him when he was just starting out. Now he's a huge chat roulette YouTuber. These guys, these people are individually very talented and they could do, you know, they can do whatever they want. Like I'm going to write this comedy stuff. I can make, I can write it. I can write, eat my diction is another guy who, you know, I can write skits about pretty much anything and make it funny. Very good comedy writers. Uh, I don't know about acting. I'm not sure. But just, you know, I can make things funny. There's a, there's a lot of those guys in this business. And they aren't just providing the lowbrow stuff because that's what the market wants. And so I look at the market and I say, what are you doing? Why are you liking this? Why do you like these things? Why do you create a market that these guys fill? Why don't you like... Like high, higher brow, tongue in cheek comedy bits. Why don't you like that? Well, because you know why? It's essentially toilet humor. It is. It, it, it's it's that version. It's that kind of stuff. Like ha 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 penis. Oh. Now don't get me wrong. I love a good ball punch. You'll get me once. You'll get oh, 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 oh. watching somebody get hit in the nuts. If you do it right, because everybody, you know, the the kids swinging the the plastic bat and tee ball, and nah, 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 nah. If there's a good ball punch or ball striking video out there, you got me. You got one viewer, a like, a favorite, or whatever. You got one. You got me for one. I'll watch it, and I'll watch it over again, because I got to get in the nuts. Hilarious. You, you'll have me for that, but that's not... I'm not like, oh, give me more ball punching. That's what I need. That's what I need in my life, more ball punching. Yeah, ball punching forever. I just want to watch endless ball punching. I don't do that. I watch it, I get my yucks, and then I go on about my business. But it appears now that there are many people who are just like, oh, man, that guy was an ass to that person. Were they an actor? Was it produced? I don't care. He. It's funny when I believe that I. he just walked up to these people and was an incredulous ass, ass wipe, ass bag, ass hat. All that stuff. Oh, that was funny. I want more of it. I want nothing but people being asses to one another. It's going to be great. What are you doing? Make these people work. Make them work a little bit harder. Now, again, they do work harder because Sam Pepper had to hire these people and coordinate and choreograph because, again, not going around touching women's asses in public because that's sexual assault. And on that note... Why do people need to be told not to do that? Who needs... You shouldn't joke about this. I see a lot of... You shouldn't joke about this because... Uh, 
because other people, impressionable minds, and other people might think it's okay or funny. And I, would you, what? What happened? I don't know what it was, but something apparently happened in our society where people just got really dumb. Because, well, let's go back to ball punching. Favorite of mine. I can watch a guy get hit in the nuts, or I can watch a funny video of guys, you know, a bunch of roommates or something, setting up a, a, a clever machine that will, have, that will inevitably launch something to hit their, their unsuspecting roommate in the balls when he walks through the door, and I'll find it funny. But I won't think it's okay. I'm not going to. I'm not going to then turn around and go, "Hey, I'm going to walk up to random people, bam, punch them in the nuts." That's hilarious. Who are these people? Where are these idiots? And what makes them so dumb that you just go and you <laughs> like, "Oh man, I watched this guy. I watched this guy punch this other guy in the nuts, and it was really funny." I'm going to emulate that. Why did the hell did jackass need to tell people, hey, idiots, maybe you shouldn't st- strap rockets to r- roller skates and try to skate down a hill? Maybe, maybe you shouldn't put an electric kind of shock thing on your gooch. The gooch. Maybe you shouldn't get in a shopping cart and have somebody push you as fast as they can into a thorny bush by Cracky or jump a river. Or maybe you shouldn't get in your Porsche when you're really drunk and drive 120 miles an hour, flip it over, and kill you and your friend. Oh, I'm sorry. That wasn't a prank? That wasn't a jackass prank? Oh. Glad he's dead. Idiot. That's what you get. (laughs) Done it multiple times. He was a serial. I'm going to get shwasted and drive my car as fast as I can. That's what happens. There you go. Why do people need to be told, hey, you know, you shouldn't do this very clearly horrible thing. Apparently, Sam Pepper now needs to, feels compelled to make a video in which he says, yeah, don't do this. I need to remind people that this is a bad idea. Who needs to be reminded of that? How the hell do you, why, we're just, we're dumb. We're dumb. Let's do some news. In the news today, this is from AL.com, Alabama's news source. Second woman this month admits to reporting a fabricated attack to University of Alabama police. Dateline, Tuscaloosa. For the second time in September, a woman has falsely reported being attacked to the University of Alabama Police Department. UAPD posted an alert Monday to warn students of an alleged harassment on the Tuscaloosa Riverwalk Trail that runs alongside the Black Warrior River just north of dorms on the university's campus. According to the original report, the woman said she was jogging on the trail Sunday morning when a man jumped out of the bushes by Cracky in front of her and pushed her to the ground. She told police that she kicked to her attacker and was able to run away. Shortly after posting the original alert, uh... UAPD updated the message saying the report was fabricated. Quote, the victim in, the, in this advisory admitted to investigators that the incident described below did not occur, UAPD said. The investigation into this case has been closed. Earlier in September, a woman told the department that she was walked, that as she walked on Bryant Drive near campus, three men tried to force her into a car and touch her sexually. That report was also revealed to be fake. Now, I bring this up because it's evidence to my point that while feminism, women's rights, whatever you want to call it, certainly noble, and things like domestic violence, rape, sexual assault, sex crimes, while they certainly are wrong and bad, and we should try to probably stop them, The answer, the answer to everybody that's outraged at the scourge of domestic violence in the NFL, to everybody that's outraged every time there's a report of some rape that wasn't, that perhaps wasn't investigated properly, or there's an allegation of rape and then an investigation, and then that person is cleared. The the alleged rapist is cleared. 
to everybody that gets outraged at those things, this is why this story, which contains not one, but two false allegations of attempted sexual assault. Unless, unless this woman, unless this woman is alleging that there's just some guy hiding in bushes by cracky and just jumping out and trying to punch people because, yeah, maybe it's another prank video. Maybe it's Sam Pepper. Let's talk to her. Hey, hey, was this some British guy with crazy hair and tats tatted up? He looks like a British Justin Bieber. Is that, was that him? Oh, damn it. Not an actress, sorry. This is proof positive that the answer to whatever the problem is is not harsher punishments. It's not do whatever the victim says and just go around arresting and invest, arresting people and charging them with serious crimes. That's not the answer. And you can call it victim blaming if you want. You can call it victim shaming. But the answer is not simply he raped me or he hit me and then boom, slap the cuffs on him. That's not the answer. It's gone too far already. It's gone way too far already. The power that people have, more often than not women, the power that people have to just say, "Eh, this crime was committed upon me, and then bam, somebody's arrested and charged with the crime. Charged with it. And that never, ever, 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 ever goes away. And it's all the response of an appeal to, it's all an emotional response. Rape is bad, and I don't, I don't disagree. Domestic violence, bad. Again, I don't disagree. But people have reacted emotionally to that stimulus or to those stimuli, and their, their, their response is, well, let's just start arresting people. Screw it. Let's just start arresting people because that will solve everything. That, and it might work. It might work in terms of, in the narrow sense, now there, there may be lasting effects, you know, you're going to, Put the hand. That's a pretty powerful tool. If a girl wakes up in the morning after a party next to a, next to a guy and goes, oh, "I don't like that," and says, oh, "I was raped," and if even one person, one person is falsely arrested and accused of rape as a result of that power, it's all wrong. It's all wrong. All of it. So yeah, rape is bad. Sexual assault is bad. Domestic violence is bad. But to try to change the system to to a system in which the victim just needs to say, ah, this happened, and, and somebody gets arrested, and we wait, and then we investigate until the dust settles, and then figure out what's going on, because, oh, my God, he might, might be dangerous. No. That's not, again, that's not the answer. And again... Going back to what we said at the begin or what I said at the beginning of the show, again with we. We have a system. We have a process. Use it. Don't just go around arresting people. Somebody calls fearful. Somebody calls making an allegation. This guy posted these lyrics and they're kind of weird to me. Or ah, this, I was jogging along and, and, and somebody knocked me to the ground and, and tried to sexually assault me. The answer isn't, all right, who, do, who are we arresting? The answer is skepticism. All right, well, explain it to me. That's skepticism. Because the lack of skepticism would be, this guy did this to me. All right, who is he? Let's go arrest him and charge him. And it, don't don't be fooled. Don't be swayed by oh you're you're shaming the victim and then and then you're you're making the victim recant recounted to you and oh my god and and, and that's so tr- terrible and tragic and yeah yeah it is but that's and that sucks but that's our system. That's our system. That's what we have. And until we change it, until we change it fundamentally, which means we tear down the constitution or start amending it and all these things, the idea of rule of law. Because he, And here's the thing that most people don't know, and most people don't really care to think about. When somebody is arrested and charged with a crime, the victim of that crime, of that allegation, of that charge, is not the person. It's not. It's the government. It's the state. The state has been victimized. Because it doesn't read, it doesn't read alleged rape victim versus alleged rapist on the docket. It's the people of the state of this, or if you have committed a serious enough crime, the United States of America 
versus you or versus this alleged guy. The victim becomes the state. The victim becomes the federal government. That's the victim. The person in in the real sense who was victimized becomes the complainant. They are not the ones that prosecute. They are not the ones that have the authority, the jurisdiction, or the power to imprison you, to judge and imprison you. They don't have that. They're just people. And in the cases of domestic violence and sexual assault, we have to harbor the, the supposed abusers and the supposed rapists from their victims. Yes, it has to be in their favor. Because, as you will recall, the victim is no longer the person alleging that says they, they had a crime committed upon them. The victim is now the state. And to say that we need to rework it in our legal system so that victims, it's easier for victims to get justice, is to say we need to remove the very things that protect people from arbitrary, capricious, and malicious prosecution. Because the evidence, the rules of evidence, the rules of trial, the, the burden of proof, and the standard by which we judge people guilty or not guilty are all slanted in favor of those accused of crimes, are all, in, all slanted in favor of those put on trial by the sovereign. And it needs to be that way. Because, because our system truly is founded on, one, on the ideal that it is better that 10, milti, 10 guilty men go free than one innocent man be put in jail. That's our system. It's supposed to be that way. Prote- saying we must protect the victims more and our, the victims of sexual assault and the victims of domestic violence, we need to protect them more in our legal system, is to say we need to completely tear down the things that protect people from bad stuff, from perhaps really bad stuff. Because the state is going to get you if they want to get you. They, they, they're... Once you once you are accused of a crime, they got you. They got their hooks in you, and they can they they will go through hell and high water if they have to, to put you in jail. And when of course because we're the sovereign and we can't have you doing this to us. We can't have you running around raping people. So yeah, we're gonna we have the power to arrest you, and you have to post bail. And then if you don't, if you don't, we'll have a bail bondsman. Or a bounty hunter come and get you. And it's like the Wild West when they try to come and get you. Or the U.S. Marshals. Tommy Lee Jones is going to come get your ass. Because we're the sovereign and that's what we do. And of course, we need to protect people from that. And it's just something, again, it's the process, the judicial process that we all enjoy, all of us. Every single one of us enjoys this, ju- this judicial process, and every single one of us enjoys the pr- these protections. And to take special cases and say, oh, well, we need to short-circuit it here for this, for this special case, then, again, you know, the, the, this, this bitch that's carrying around her mattress because, oh, my God, I was, it was raped. I was raped two years ago. Did you report it? Well, no. Okay, so you, you only reported it to police about a year and a half after it happened? Yeah, and... You're wondering why the guy isn't in jail? Yeah. Well, because you don't have any freaking evidence. It's just your word. We can't be going around putting people in jail just because of your word. But if you want to, oh, we need to, we need to short circuit it here. Arrest that guy and investigate. Then screw it. Then screw it all. What do you think? Reddit, Twitter, Facebook? What do you think? Tell us what you think. Let's put this man's life in your completely in your hands. Screw the judicial process. Screw evidence rules. Screw a spirited defense. No, 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 no. Reddit's got this one on lockdown. Let's let them, let's let them figure it all out. Or let's let this broad and her friends on Facebook and all the people that go to her website, let's let them, there you go. You guys, you guys do this. You guys figure this one out. And uh, in, a, in a final bit of news, this is from the New York Times Fresh graves point to undercount of Ebola toll. Ebola toll. (laughs) Um, 
Freetown, Freetown in Sierra Leone. The gravedigger hacked at the cemetery's dense undergrowth, clearing space for the day's Ebola victims. A burial team in protective suits worn, torn with gaping holes by Cracky arrived with fresh bodies. The backs of the battered secondhand vans carrying the dead were closed with twisted, rusting wire. Bodies were dumped in new graves, and a worker in a short sleeve shirt, excuse me, short sleeve shirt carried away the stretcher, wearing only plastic bags over his hands as protection. The outlook for the day at King Tom's Cemetery was busy. Was busy and busy. We'll, we'll need much more space," said James C. O. Hamilton, the chief grave digger, as a colleague cleared the brush, cleared the bush with his machete. The Ebola epidemic is spreading rapidly in Sierra Leone's densely packed capital, and it may already be far worse than the authorities acknowledge. Since the beginning of the outbreak more than six months ago, the Sierra Leone Health Ministry reported only 10 confirmed Ebola deaths here in Freetown, the capital of more than 1 million people, and its suburbs as of Sunday. A hopeful sign that this city, unlike the capital of neighboring Liberia, had been relatively spared the ravages of the outbreak. But the bodies pouring into the graveyard tell a different story. In the last eight days alone, 110 Ebola victims have been buried at King Tom Cemetery, according to the supervisor, Abdul Ra uh, Rahman Parker, or Ra <laughs> is he beef or chicken? Uh, Abdul Rahman Parker, suggesting an outbreak that is much more deadly than either the government or international health officials have announced. The World Health Organization, this is later in the article, the World Health Organization acknowledged weeks ago that despite its best efforts to tally the thousands of cases in the region, the official statistics probably, quote, vastly underestimate the magnitude of the outbreak, end quote. Now, this is the cry of this, the outbreak isn't nearly as bad as, as people think it is has been a rallying cry of many people who probably just don't want to, they don't want to have to talk about why the outbreak is as bad as it is in Western Africa. They don't want to have to, they don't want to talk about that. They don't want to, uh, because then you have to talk about, you know, these people are pretty dumb because they're running around kissing the dead bodies of Ebola victims and they live in densely packed hovels where they give it to each other and there's probably a, a whole lot of, unprotected sex going around and people living in close proximity and, and having sex in close proximity is probably a, a way to transmit. Not that the sex does it, but you're, you know, when you're having sex with somebody, you're probably pretty close to them. Huh? Huh? Would you say, doesn't that maybe have something to do with it? And you have a lot of superstitions, a lot of rampant religious thing to the, to the point where people are, are not trusting, not trusting the people sent there to contain the outbreak. Oh, I'm, I'm, I don't trust you because of my silly superstitious religion because I'm still in the 14th century. And they, they, they don't want to talk about They don't want to have to talk about that because it might seem racist. Because, oh, we don't, we kind of pretend that these people in Africa are, again, living in the 14th century and we're pulling them up. We're trying, we're doing our best to pull them up and say, okay, here's you go. Here you go. Here's technology. Here's free stuff. And they just, uh, religion and superstition and crazy crap still. They don't want to have to, uh, no, 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 no. But here, here we have. So people have said, oh, see, look, it's only 10 cases. It's dying out. It's dying out. It's dying out. Uh, no. No, it's not. No, it's not. Real estimates put the put the infection toll at 500,000 by the end of the month. 500,000 people. And we're flying victims back to America. And again, to not appear racist, people say, well, you see, don't worry. No need to worry. No need to worry. And you, there are people that question that are skeptical of that. They say, you know, maybe we just shouldn't be flying Ebola victims back here. Or maybe we should, like you know, effectively quarantine the area and, and screw your silly superstitions and crap religion. Screw that. You're not, you're done spreading Ebola. You're done kissing bodies. We're not burying the bodies. We're burning them because we're, and why, 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 why are you burying people with a deadly disease? Why are you doing that? Honestly, does that seem, how does that seem like a good idea? What you should say, what should be done is, no, 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 we're burning the... First of all, you're done kissing dead bodies. You're done doing that. 
oh, it's my religion. It's my religion. No, 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 no. I don't care. You're done doing that crap, backwards ass idiots. Stop kissing dead bodies of highly contagious people with a deadly, 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 deadly virus. Stop it. And if you do, we're just going to shoot you. Because now you may have it, and then you're going to go off, and you'll only show signs a week to two weeks later, but you've been you've been positive, and you've been spreading it that entire time, and then you hide from us because, oh, the evil white man's going to come get me. Screw it. We're just, bam. Oh, you kiss that dead buddy? Bam. Bullet. Brain. Yours. And, again, your silly superstitions and cra- crap religion aside, we're burning the bodies. We're going to set them on fire in a really, really, really hot fire. Because I rip and I rhyme, I rhyme and I rip. This is the way that Dylan spits. But I, no, you were burning it. Burn it. Burn it. Uh, and this is, this is, again, completely ignorant of anything that, sa- that says, you know, hey, you shouldn't burn Ebola victims. <laughs> because maybe, the, maybe it becomes aerosol then, and that would be really bad. So unless there's something there that says, you know, burning Ebola victims is actually quite a lot bit quite a bit worse than just burying them in the ground. All right. But suffice it to say, yeah, your worries about the the spread of Ebola definitely founded. Definitely founded. And probably much of it, much of it, much of the continued outbreak of Ebola comes from people who want to be politically correct and not put the hammer down on Western African culture because they don't want to appear racist or because they don't want to appear prejudicial. Screw your stupid religion. Screw your sc- stupid local customs. Screw it. No, this do- your stupid crap doesn't matter anymore. The prime directive, right, of the, the, the Fe- United Federation of Planets, that if there's a species that's not able to... That's not able to understand what they're going to be doing. The, the Federation won't interfere with them. That's essentially what we've done with African cultures. We'll give them money and stuff, but we don't want to appear racist by saying, you guys are backwards and dumb because you're saying that about black people and somehow that's racist. So we just kind of pretend that they're not backwards and dumb. But they are backwards and dumb. And their backwards and dumbness is now spreading a very, very deadly disease. But still, to not appear racist, we haven't. We're not putting our foot down as a as a global culture, as a global society, and saying, "Stop it! We'll send in military and hazmat suits if we have to to stop you from doing this backwards and stupid crap that's giving this disease life every single time." The disease probably should have died out with normal quarantine efforts. It should have died out a while ago. But it's still as vibrant as ever, approaching five, half a million people and probably going to come to some European or, America, or, or North American shore pretty damn soon, P- perhaps by the end of the year. That'll be great. We'll have Ebola in America and w- troops on the ground in Syria. It's going to be great. Holy crap. It's basically just like that Tom Clancy novel. Oh, my God. The next thing we're going to find out, if we find out... <laughs> I'm going to say this right now. If we find out that Al-Qaeda or some kind of, some group with some affiliation to ISIS or radical Islamic jihadists, if we find out that they are somehow, somehow, in some way, connected to the Ebola outbreak or at least the sustained power of the Ebola outbreak, if we find that out, and then, and again, by Christmas it gets here, and then we also have troops on the ground fighting ISIS, Tom Clancy didn't die of natural causes. Tom Clancy was murdered because he uncovered the plot of some cabal or something, and he wrote about it in his book. Either that or Tom, Tom Clancy was Jesus. Maybe Tom Clancy was Jesus. Is it possible? I'm just asking questions. Let's bring it home. Another great episode of The Lefty Show. I thank you all for joining. I had a great time putting on the show for you. I hope you had a great time listening. Thank you to everybody for watching, liking, favoriting, subscribing on YouTube. YouTube.com slash LeftyOX is where you can find the show in its YouTube formation as well as gaming content and vlogs, everything of the sort there. YouTube.com 
slash LeftyOX. Thank you to everybody that's following me on Twitter. Stay all stay up to date on all the latest and greatest Lefty Show news. YouTube or that's uh, Twitter.com slash Lefty643 or just at Lefty643. Thank you to everybody that's been sharing the show, helping the show grow. Uh, we've got a, a nice presence there on the RSS feed, LeftyShow.Podbean.com or wherever you get your podcast for your PC, Android, iOS, mobile device, or tablet. Search The Lefty Show wherever you get your podcast. You'll find us there. Be sure to subscribe and download all the episodes at your leisure. Thank you to everybody for donating. I'm Ranging.com slash 643 Productions as well. Anyway, guys, that's my time. I got to get out of here. Thank you for joining. I'll catch you next time. I'm out. Bye. He's got AIDS.